How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I am Dave B, and I sell Chevrolets at Schumacher Chevrolet in Livingston, New Jersey. The reason for this video is to kind of do a, a quick random video, some final thoughts on my 2019 Chevrolet Bolt lease that just ended, and some introductory thoughts on the 22 Bolt EUV that I just purchased. As a Chevy salesperson, I feel like it's important to make these videos to get the information out there for people who are interested in electric vehicles. I know they don't work well for everybody, but there are a lot of people that they can fit them into their, their daily lives and in their family routines. Um, it's also very important for me to make these videos, not only because I sell Chevrolets, but because I literally drive Chevrolets. So I have a lot of experience driving these electric cars that I'm talking about, and I can express, um, you know, basically my uh, experiences to you through the camera. First up, the 2019. I did lease this vehicle in September of 2019. I paid a $369 payment. I put no money down, not a dime out of pocket when I did it, and I leased it with 15,000 miles per year. It was a 36 month. I only paid 35 payments because I got out of lease one month early when I purchased the new 2022. Those 35 payments at $369 equaled $12,915. That's what I paid to drive this car for 35 months. In that 35 months, we drove this vehicle 46,803 miles. That was 1,803 miles over my limit. So with the 25 cent mileage penalty, there should have been a $450 and 75 cent penalty that I would have paid. However, the dealership bought me out of this vehicle, so I did not have to pay that mileage overage, and I also did not have to pay the final payment, that 36 payment. We basically bought the car out, used it as a trade towards the deal. I washed myself out of it even, and we went into the new 2022 EUV. The next question that always comes up is how much does it cost or how much did you pay to charge the car? Now that's going to depend on your personal situation. Do you charge at home? Do you charge at work? Does it cost anything? You know, there's a lot of different variables. I am very, very fortunate that I can charge here when I'm at the dealership for work. And also the community that we live in has level two chargers as an amenity. So you can basically charge at home for free. So this vehicle costs me virtually nothing to drive for the 46,000 miles that I've that I've driven it. Now I say virtually nothing because yes, I did take some trips. I drove this vehicle to DC. I went to Rehoboth Beach and just a bunch of various relatively local trips, you know, 350, 400 miles where I had to find charging while I was out there to get to my destination. If I had to add the, the cost that I've spent charging this car at public stations, I mean, no more than $200, I would say, in the 35 months that I had it. You know, it's DC fast chargers in different locations like Targets and Walmarts and rest areas. 12 bucks here, five bucks there, eight bucks here, you know, that sort of thing. Another thing that you might end up doing when you um, when you drive an electric car, you go on these apps that they have and you can find all the chargers that are out there. Maybe you find something that charges for free. Maybe you're staying at a hotel and there's a Chevrolet dealership local where you can charge there. You know, so I did some of that as well to, to maximize my savings. The next question is maintenance. What does it cost to keep one of these cars going? And it's very, very inexpensive. On this car, I've done three tire rotations. That is all. Now at 46,000 miles, I probably should have did a couple more tire rotations, but I didn't. I did three. Those three tire rotations uh, also included a multi-point inspection done here at the dealership. Now the first one is complimentary. The second and the third one I paid for 55, 60 bucks, something like that, uh, to get the tires rotated and for them to do a, a you know, multi-point inspection on the vehicle. I did literally nothing else to this that cost me money. Now, that being said, this vehicle did have one major repair. Obviously, you've probably heard the bolt recall for the battery. So the battery was replaced in this car. Uh, I think I was at like 38,000 miles when I had it done. I was the first one here at the dealership that they did. So they used it like kind of like a guinea pig, you know, to see what the process was and use my car as an example. Um, that was covered by warranty. So it didn't cost me a dime. I was away from the vehicle for two days. Didn't really matter. I had another car I can drive. Really, it's a one day job. They can knock it out pretty quick. Again, this one being the first one, they just kind of started it one day, they finished it the next day. It is important to note also when you do get that battery upgrade, your warranty on that battery starts when you get that battery replaced. So it's a new eight year or 100,000 mile warranty on that new battery. So, you know, everyone always talks about how much it costs to replace the battery. I don't know of anybody who actually physically had to pay for it. Um, in this case, obviously with the bolts, they were all replaced under warranty and it cost LG something like $2 billion to get the job done. Thinking back on this 2019 Chevrolet Bolt uh, that I've driven, you know, I've talked about it in the past. Electrics, they drive great. It's the quietness. It's the pretty much instant torque. It's the regenerative braking. It's all the cool things about electric cars that are fun to drive. The car did everything it needed, you know, I needed it to do. And it did it, again, very efficiently, very reliably, 
and very inexpensively. So with my experience with my 2019 Chevrolet Bolt all being positive, it just made all the sense in the world for me to go into a 2022 EUV. Now I already talked about how, in my opinion, the styling of the new version is a thousand times better than the old version, uh, both inside and out. So we're not gonna go too far or too deep into that sort of thing. Um, really that's in the eye of the beholder. Again, I feel that this 22 is much much better looking uh cooler looking a little less ev looking like it just looks like a normal crossover type vehicle i also am very happy to say that i literally on this particular car my deal is literally the best car deal of any new car in the united states of america any make any model any brand i challenge somebody to beat the deal now i don't have this the specs right here for me but i did make a youtube short about it which i'm going to insert right now i just recently purchased this 2022 chevrolet bolt euv and i want to take a second to introduce you to the best car deal in america any brand any model any make i challenge you to beat this deal msrp of this vehicle is thirty five thousand eight hundred and eighty five dollars and my sale price was thirty five thousand six hundred and thirty one from that number we're going to subtract the chevrolet sixty three hundred dollar rebate for the price reduction on the 2022 model then we're going to subtract three thousand dollars because i'm a general motors employee then we're going to subtract thirty $3,750 because I had a 2019 Bolt lease that was ending. Then we're going to subtract $2,000 because I had sort of a GM corporate hookup. Then we're going to subtract $4,000 because the state of New Jersey is currently giving a $4,000 incentive when you buy an electric car. All those discounts bring us down to $16,581 to which we add tax and fees. But in New Jersey, there is no sales tax on an electric car. So I just had to pay a $6 tire fee, a $329 dealer documentation fee, and $386 for a four-year New Jersey registration. Grand total $17,302, which is over 50% off. Incredible deal, right? I mean, how could I pass that up? Now, let's take a quick look at some of the initial differences between the two that I've noticed. Some of the stuff might be pretty trivial, but we're gonna bring it up anyway. Now, when I said trivial, I wasn't kidding. On the 2019, the windows do not roll all the way down into the door. I don't know if that's specific to the Bolt EV on the new one, because I haven't physically looked yet, but I am proud and happy to say that on the 22 EUV, they do. They roll all the way down into the door. It's just much cooler. Very, very important feature in the 2019, when you open your center console here, you're gonna notice that you have a tray that pulls out and then you have a nice deep storage bin there uh, where you can put all your belongings and things you may carry. But the tray is nice because it helps break that up into two different sections. Now, I'm not sure why, but in the 2022, when we lift up that armrest, you'll notice there is no tray. It's just one deep storage. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, if you start putting stuff in there, everything's gonna get buried. It's gonna be a complete mess. Now, that being said, I did find on Amazon a tray that sits inside that center console in the new bolts. It doesn't necessarily fit 100%. When you look at the reviews, it says that once it's in, the lid doesn't necessarily close all the way. You really have to press it down hard uh, for it to kind of lock in place. Some people actually did file away portions of it to give it more clearance where it would. I don't know if that's something you're interested in, but I will put the link down below for that that part on Amazon in case you want to pick one up in case you're driving a Bolt. Actually, it'll be right below the link to my website where you could actually pick up this really cool Dave B. Cell Chevy t-shirt for only 20 bucks. My 2020 EUV is an LT model, right? The, the 2019 I had was a Premier. So the Premier obviously has more equipment in it, but nothing really that I miss in this 2022. Now, I will say the first thing I did notice when I drove home, as soon as I got on the highway, I realized I do not have an auto dimming mirror anymore. I have the little tab on the bottom that you have to pull back and forth. I noticed it immediately as soon as I got on the highway and headlights came in through the window, two reasons. One, the back windows weren't tinted yet like they are now. And in the last car, I had the auto dimming mirror. And not only was it the auto dimming mirror, but it also had the camera as well, which was a nice, uh, nice feature. Although I gotta say, I did not use it all that much. The other feature that 2019 had was the Bose premium stereo system, which really does sound great in this car. I don't have that in the 2022. However, again, the sound in this one is more than satisfying for my music needs. Most of the times when I'm in the car listening to podcasts and stuff like that anyway, but when I do want to crank up the volume, uh, it does the job. One thing I will tell you is the new 2022 EUV, for whatever reason, you get fingerprints on the screen tremendously more than I did in the last one. So you're going to want to make sure you have some sort of a, a cloth like this where you can just wipe her down and get those fingerprints off. I literally do that every day when I park the car. So when I wake up in the morning, it looks nice and clean. 
As far as like drivability and things like that, the car feels exactly the same as the last one. Uh, if I had to point out any uh, any couple things, I will say that the position of the paddle, I thought was gonna be a little more um, a little more difficult as far as it being higher rather than being lower. However, I think it really works out well, especially when you make a right turns. So there's times when I'm driving and you're making a turn and it was tough to kind of get that paddle. But now if you just press like this, you can reach it from the back, hold it, and then just make that right hand turn if you're getting uh, you know, off an exit or you're going around a corner or something like that, and you wanna actually use that regen on demand while you're making that turn. Uh, the other thing is, I think they kind of reprogrammed uh, the, the regen on demand because it does feel smoother than the last car. The last car I felt was a little more abrupt when you would use it, you would get a little bit more of the body going back and forth. You would notice it with your passengers. So it was always better to drive in one pedal and then use this as a secondary. And this one, it doesn't really feel like that. It feels like you can just use this and it's definitely a little more smoother than what it once was in the, in the previous model. That's pretty much everything I wanted to touch on except for two more things, the mods that I've currently done to the car. So as you might know from previous videos, I did get the vehicle ceramic coated. So we're gonna talk about that. And we're also gonna talk about the drop stop or whatever this thing's called it is called the seat gap filler for cars trucks suv the drop stop this i did actually put in the car i wanted to show you because when i cleaned out the last one i noticed that i did have some uh some stuff between the seats you know coins french fries nonsense so those drop stops uh, they basically fit here goes around the seat belt fits in between the seat you got one on each side um I bought it at the container store, which is right down the street here in Livingston. And so far, I highly recommend. Okay, lastly, the ceramic coating. I got it three weeks ago today it was the day I dropped it off to get it done. I have not washed the car, done anything to the car since then. We've had probably about three or four days of rain, including it rain yesterday. I've driven in the rain a couple times. And I got to tell you, it's holding up very well. One of the things that the gentleman said when I got it done was that the car literally is going to clean itself. Like the water takes the dirt with it. If you look at certain spots, you can see there is some dirt coming down. Obviously, along the bottom, plastics, you can see some dirt. So it definitely needs a wash, which I'm going to do this weekend. Uh, one thing I was very impressed with, uh, a couple days after getting it done, I was with my friends and their son, who's like six or seven? Seven. He closed the door. He put his entire handprint on the door. No big deal. Now, I wasn't washing the vehicle, so that handprint was just going to stay there until the next time I washed it. However, the rain took the handprint off the door because it's gone. So I don't know if that's a thing with ceramic coating, but so far I'm very impressed. Um, obviously you can see in the back here, there is some dirt spots and some dust and things like that, which is to be expected. But the car looks really, really good. It looks really clean. I mean, the shine is still fantastic. And again, I haven't done anything to it in three weeks since it was done. So I'm excited because I think it's really gonna lessen how much I have to wash the vehicle, which on a black car is gonna lessen the amount of times that you could get swirl marks and things like that from just the normal washing process. I hope you got some sort of value or entertainment out of this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. We're almost hitting 20,000 subscribers, which is pretty cool. I don't ask for that often, but I feel every now and then I might as well. If you have any Bolt questions whatsoever or Chevrolet EV questions, um, you know, listen, put them in the comments. I'll answer all of them to the best of my ability.